a filtering impulse noise. Now, as you can clearly see, right, impulse noise is not the same as an AWGN, okay, and it can also be sparse. What that means is in an image, right, it doesn't mean that all the pixels are affected. And so, for example, as you traverse through this image, maybe something is affected here, something is affected here, something is affected here, but not everything, depending upon the situation. And, and the, the other thing is, right, the impulse noise is such that, right, whatever is this value, the value that you get here, right, that's going to completely change this intensity here. It has got, it will have no relation whatsoever with respect to the, right, original intensity there, which then means that typically, right, you know, if you think that, right, pixels ought to take values that are similar, right, within a neighborhood, now a pixel that is affected by impulse noise will, will typically not at all follow whatever is around it because it's been completely changed. And therefore, Right. The usual idea behind doing impulse and impulse filtering is to, is to employ what are called order statistics filters. Order statistics filters. Okay. These are not the same as the filters that we have, that we have seen till now. Okay. What are called rank order statistics filters. Okay. In the sense that you rank the pixels according to their, to their intensities and then, and then, right, do some kind of operation. Okay. That is the idea. And typically these filters are non-linear. Okay. These are not the kind of linear filters and all, right, which we have seen till now especially with respect to AWG and noise and all what we saw was all linear filter and so on, right? Whereas this is, uh, whereas, right, this is non-linear as far as impulse noise filtering is, is concerned. And, uh, and some see very simple filters have been there, have been around, and these are really, really quite, uh, quite see, effective. And, you uh, know, and you see, unless otherwise, otherwise said, we will assume that, uh, you know, the impulse noise can range anywhere between 0 and 255. So all paper noise, when needed, right, I'll explain them. I, I'll, I'll kind of talk about it in some examples, only when we know for sure that an image is affected by salt, salt paper noise. Otherwise, we'll assume that the image has been affected by uniform noise carrying a value anywhere between 0 and 255. Okay. Now, uh, when you want to do filtering, okay, one of the most standard filters, right, that one can use is what is called a median filter. Right? You must have heard about it. What is called uh, what is called a median filter. Right? This goes by the by the by the idea of what we mean by really a median, uh, right? Uh, no, median value. Now imagine that imagine that right. You are actually sitting here, and this pixel is what you want to filter. You do not know whether it is affected by impulse noise or not. It could be. Okay. Uh, we are not actually going through uh, going through an approach which will first detect whether whether something is impulse affected or not, and then applying. We are not going to go, right. We are going with a very simple filter which is going to act on all the pixels. Okay, now here what will happen is, uh, so for example, right, what it will mean is that even if a filter is not affected by noise, let's say, but then you still, you still do some kind of impulse filtering, uh, use some kind of median filtering, you won't do too much harm because of the fact that these pixels around it, right, are likely to have similar values and therefore you don't, you don't expect, right, too much of a harm to occur. Now, the median filter, right, uh, think of, uh, think of, let's say, right, suppose you want to, you want to think of a three cross three median filter. What it actually means is that you want to filter this pixel of its impulse noise. And therefore, what you will do is you will take this to see three cross three, three neighborhood. And then, and then whatever, whatever are those intensities, you're going to write all of them up. Then you are kind of either going to put them in an ascending order or you will put them in kind of, uh, in, a, right, in a kind of a descending order, right? And, uh, and then, right, what it will mean is, and then once you have it, then whatever is the median value, right? After you do this, right, if you pick the median value, Okay, whatever is the median value after you do the rank ordering, you pick the median value and that will be the intensity that you will assign in the output array. Right? You will have an output array where for this intensity, you will actually copy this median value. So the idea behind the median filter, okay, which we employ for filtering impulse noise is as follows. Okay, imagine that, uh, that you have a bunch of intensities at some location. Okay, like this, and uh, suppose okay, suppose the central central this one pixel is the one that is affected by impulse noise. Assume that it has a value, let's say two hundred, and the neighboring scene points okay, I mean, do not match up with this because those are the scene intensities. Let us say that those are much lower, something somewhere around ninety, hundred, maybe ninety five, maybe one hundred and ten, one hundred and twenty, one hundred and five. 98104 right something like that now the now the fact is right if if this was not also affected by intensity uh, by by impulse noise right then of course okay, then then you would have uh, kind of expected this intensity to be somewhat similar to its to its uh, neighboring values but then because of the fact that this has been affected by impulse noise right it has become very high 
It could also have been on the other hand very low, right? It depends upon how the impulse noise affected it. Now the, uh, the idea behind uh, the, the behind you know, taking the median value is to make sure, right, that you kind of knock this outlier out, right? You should be able to remove this outlier and somehow replace it with, let's say, one of the neighboring values. Because the neighboring intensities, we would kind of say, believe that, right, those kind of belong to the to the scene intensity and therefore right if you were to replace with one of those neighboring values then you would have you would have, you would have kind of arrived at the right value for for this uh, for this pixel location right value for the intensity at this pixel location so when you uh, right before you compute the median you of course you know put uh, pixels uh, put these intensities in uh, right in an order okay it doesn't matter whether you whether you you know put it in uh, uh, this one descending order or in an ascending order suppose we just put these pixels in an ascending order then we'll have something like 90, 95, 98, then I think we have 100, then 105, oh sorry, 104 is there, okay, there's 104 here, then 105, uh, then I think it's 110, and 120, and 200, right? Now, now if you see, right, an outlier, okay, which, which would not fit the surrounding intensity goes off to the extreme. And therefore, when you actually pick up the pick the median value, right, you would end up picking the median value is 104. And therefore, this pixel intensity will eventually get replaced by 104 after you do the median filtering. Okay. Now, if you had done it a descending manner, then this 200 would have come on the left extreme. Okay. Again, when you actually pick the median value, you would have knocked it out. Okay. So the whole idea behind employing a median filter for impulse noise, right, is to simply make sure that the outlier, right, will not will not be chosen after filtering. Okay, assuming that the that the surrounding intensities that have not been affected affected and the surrounding intensities are the ones that actually represent the scene intensity. Okay, that is the idea behind the median filter. Let's just take one example in order to you know, illustrate this better. Now let us say that we have x of m comma n to be this array, which is 10, 12, 15, 1, 7, 8, 14. 2022 20, right so we so we would like to so so the idea is that we have we have uh, we have a pixel here right which we want to replace it's three cross three neighbors are these so now what what should we do so now we first kind of you know, you know so if we, if we write down we first write down this array but then let us write down in some order either in an ascending order or on a kind of right descending order let's say that uh, we you know we you know we put these intensity values in an ascending order that will mean you have like one seven 8, 10, 12, 14, 15, 20, 22, right? So we have actually 9 values, 3, 6, 9. So the median is, right, leave 4 on either side, okay? And then, and then whatever stays in the center is the median, right? And this, this is, okay, so, so then what will happen? So the 7 will get replaced, will get replaced by 12, right? In the, in the filtered image, replaced by 12 in the filtered image. Okay, by this, by this, by this median value. In case you choose to have some kind of an even filter, okay, which is very, which is very rare. Okay, if you have even, uh, right, I mean, even number of elements here, then the median value is simply the average of the central, uh, central two values. But normally that is very uncommon, so we just go with odd size filters. So you can have three cross three, you can have five cross five, but typically, you know, beyond this is uncommon. Okay, so you'll have median filters of the size three cross three or five cross five. Okay, you can also show that, you uh, know, it should be straightforward for you to show that a median filter is not linear. Okay, that I, that, that I would, uh, I would leave it to you as an exercise to show that right, it is not linear. Now, uh, there is, there are, uh, there is, uh, there is also, right, another, uh, so, right, this is median filter. Now, among the order statistic filters, some other, some other filters that are very common are what is called a max filter. All these are rank order based. Okay, so that's why they're all called order statistics filters. What this does, this does is, this will take g of x, y, if you call this as the filtered image, this will be max of the, or uh, max of the, max of the noisy image, okay, at the location f of, f of x, st, where st, right, is all those, all those locations belonging to the neighborhood of, let's say, s of x, comma, y, okay, so, so this could be a three cross three neighborhood about, Okay, a neighborhood centered at x comma y. Okay, for example, or it could even be phi cross phi centered at x comma y. Ah, oh, sorry, at uh, yeah, at x comma y. 
Okay, so so what this max filter does is, you know, among these intensity values, it will pick only the only the max value, right? Rather than the median value, this max filter, which is, which is again an order statistics filter, will pick the max value. You know, why do you think why do you think something like that makes sense? Okay, this is useful. Okay, such a filter is useful to handle. Such a filter is useful to deal with pepper noise. Okay, to deal with pepper noise pepper noise okay <clears throat> if the if the impulse noise is unipolar if the impulse noise is unipolar okay unipolar in the sense that okay in the in the in the sense that right we know that we know that right uh, we know that uh, that it is that the image is affected only by this kind of noise a pepper noise and not by salt noise salt pepper will uh, kind of make it a bipolar noise Okay, so it is unipolar noise. In such unipolar noise, it makes sense to use a max filter. So, in a sense, right, what you are trying to do is you are trying to find the brightest points in the image, right? Because you are using the max value, so you are finding out the brightest points in, in an image. Now, similar to this, you can have what is called really a min filter. And the min filter is such that you know, just exactly the opposite of what we what the max filter does is equal to min of f of x comma t. All the things right still remain the same. Whatever we said earlier. So this min is calculated over all pixel locations s comma t. The intensity is in pixel location s comma t that that uh, that belong to the neighborhood of of x comma y three cross three or five cross five neighborhood neighborhood of x comma y and uh, and uh, right, what this ends up doing is it finds the darkest points in the image, finds the darkest points in the image, and as you can see, darkest points in the image. And uh, why would why would something like this be useful? Okay, this is useful when okay a min filter is useful when the noise is unipolar. The filter is useful useful to reduce salt noise reduce salt noise okay salt noise when if the impulse noise is unipolar again if the impulse noise if the impulse if the impulse noise is unipolar okay obviously so salt noise example saturated pixels and so on okay saturated pixels now there is also something called the alpha trimmed filter okay which is somewhere right in between uh, this is somewhere in between an averaging filter and a median filter it's called the alpha trimmed filter what this does is Suppose you have, uh, right? Suppose you have, uh, suppose we, suppose you have n square pixels. Okay. Let us say that, let us say that you've taken an n cross n window. And suppose you have n square pixels, right? Then what it does is, okay. Uh, okay. Now suppose order them. Okay. So first order, order them according to their intensities according to their intensities okay rank order them basically rank order them according to their intensities then what do you do then you delete then you delete d by 2 lowest and d by 2 and d by 2 highest gray levels highest gray levels where d is something right which we need to choose and let fr be the residual intensities fr of st be the remaining uh be the remaining okay that's why it's called a trimmed filter right remaining alpha okay alpha now right uh, think of d as alpha okay be the remaining n square minus d pixels okay now from these remaining to remaining d pixels n square minus d pixels you you kind of uh, filter such that g of x y so the filtered image at some location x comma y right is equal to one by 
okay n square minus d you take the average of these of these remaining intensity values right s comma t where where of course right okay so you know right s comma so fr of s comma t will be simply the remaining n square minus d pixels so what this actually means is that you are at some x comma y right whatever okay you are at some x comma y and uh, and right and uh, suppose let's say you've taken a phi cross phi neighborhood which means that you've got say 25 pixels you order all these intensities and then and then you pick a d right whatever you want to do uh, whatever d you wish to choose and then and then in the ordered pixels right when you have ordered them okay knock off the ignore the you know the lowest d by 2 and then the highest d by 2 and then whatever remains is here you see fr fr of s comma t just just uh, just take the average of, of these pixels okay now uh, now the idea is that right i mean so, uh, so if d okay now uh, this alpha term filter right leads to leads to two extreme situations if d is equal to 0 then of course what you have is simply the averaging filter right i mean because if d equal to 0 that means you are taking an average of all the all these say, all the you know all the n square intensities d equal to 0 we get the mean filter okay we get the mean filter on the other hand if d is equal to if d is equal to n square minus 1 okay that means if d is equal to n square minus 1 okay then then the output is simply the the median value so which means that what you end up with is simply the median filter okay therefore <laughs> Therefore, right. Uh, so, for the for when uh, other than these two extreme situations, when you pick a pick, you know, a different d, then then such a filter is is useful when you have a combination of is useful for a combination of for images that have combined combined uh, Gaussian or combined Gaussian and impulse noise, right? Because we know that uh, spatial averaging is good if you have a Gaussian noise. We know that median filter is good uh, medium for impulse noise. And therefore, such an alpha trim filter is good for a com combination of Gaussian and impulse noise. Okay. Now, the, the other thing, right, that let's say, you know, one might want to ask is when we did averaging filters for AWGN, we had a notion of spatially weighting them, right? Like, for example, a weighted averaging, a Gaussian, for example. We said that, right, a Gaussian could, could assign more weight to the central pixel and less weight as you go outside and so on. So, one might want to ask, is there, is there a similar thing like, that one could do with mean, would, that one could do with median filters also? Can we talk about a weighted median filter? The answer is yes. Right? So the other kinds of filters that are that are also around, okay, among them are a few, okay, which I'm going to explain. What is called a weighted median filter, okay, or a WM, okay. So this called this is a weighted median. Okay, how does uh, how does how does a weighted median filter work? It works as follows. Suppose, okay, suppose you have x equal to, okay, let's let's say x1 comma x2 all the way up to xn, okay. So, which basically means that, right, you've taken, uh, okay, you've taken a window, right, about, about some pixel that you would like to filter, and these values are like x1, x2, x3, and, and so on, okay, xn. Now, choose w to be equal to w1, w2, all the way up to wn, where, where this w consists of all, each wi is simply a positive integer, okay, it is a positive integer. So that means it can take values 1, 2, 3, and so on, okay. Now, now let us let us uh, let us uh, let us compute the output as y of n, okay, at that location n. Let's say y of n, okay, will be uh, will be of course the you know weighted median filter of x, okay, weighted weighted median of x, which we are now going to write as median of. Okay, this we're going to simplify to median of uh, w1 triangle x1 w2 triangle x2 all the way up to wn triangle xn where where this uh, where this operator right the triangle what this means is wi triangle xi is simply equal to xi repeated wi times okay simply repeat xi wi times okay xi repeated Okay, repeated wi times okay that's what it means repeated okay, repeated wi times 
Okay, so now you can see, right? So you're trying to weight it in a sort of in a sort of a different manner when it comes to a weighted median filter. And you're repeating that intensity value, right? Depending upon what you give us, give us WI for that particular intensity value. So let us take an example to understand this. Let's say that x equal to 12,6,4,1,9. Okay, if I had done median of x, what would that be? That will be, let's say median of, we could just put this in an ascending order, 1, 4, 6, 9, 12. And therefore the median value will be this, so which is equal to 6, right? So the, so the, so the median filtered value of this, of x would be 6. But suppose you want to do a weighted median, in which case I have to tell what is this W matrix now corresponding to each intensity. I'm going to give this as 1, 2, 3, 2, 1. Okay. So what this means is that 12 is going to repeat one time, 6 is going to repeat twice, 4 is going to repeat thrice, 1 is going to repeat twice, 9 is going to repeat once. Okay. Therefore, now Y of N, okay, if you say it's equal to weighted median of X, right, that will be equal to median of, okay, now we'll have to, we'll have to repeat 12 once. 6 twice, 4 3 times, 4 4 4, 1 2 times, so 1 comma 1, and 9 1 time. Okay, this would be median of, now now let us sort these numbers, okay, let's say in an ascending order, 1 comma 1, 4 comma 4 comma 4, 6 comma 6, 9 comma 12. And now if you look at the median value, there are 2, 4, 6, 8, 9. Therefore, leave off 4 here, leave off 4 here, and then the median is 4. Okay, so the value is now 4. Okay, and as you can see, right, instead of if you had taken a simple median, you would have ended up with a value 6. Okay, but then because of the fact that it took a weighted median, and if you look at it, this weighted median actually put more emphasis for the intensity 4, right? And therefore, the output, you also see that the median uh, value has turned out to be 4, the weighted median value. Okay, so in that sense, you can also have a, have a weighted median filter. Okay, which can, which can actually do things similar to the way that we would expect a weighted averaging filter, filter to do, right? In the sense that you can, you can start emphasizing certain intensities more depending upon what you want to, want to, right? How you, how you actually, how you actually construct the weight vector. Now, along the same line, there's also some, something called centrally weighted or central weighted mean filter or center weighted. Okay, let's write it as center weighted. Weighted median filter, what is called CWM, center weighted weighted median filter, what is also called CWM. Okay, this gives more weight, gives more weight to the central pixel, more weight to to the to the central pixel, right? This is somewhat similar to to uh, to the fact that right that, that you would want to give the pixel under consideration more weight, okay, while you're doing the filtering process. So like saying that y is equal to median of, so, so, right, this will turn out to be, so you'll have, you may have x1, x2, all the way up to, let's say, xl minus 1, and then, or let's say c minus 1, right, if you want to call the central pixel as c, okay, then c minus 1, where c is an integer, and then you have xc repeated some wc times, okay, uh, well, we are writing it as wcxc, right, how would we, how are we writing it? Yeah, okay, wcxc. Okay, so, so let us follow the same kind of annotation that we've been doing before. So WC XC, right? So that means XC repeats WC times. And then you have XC plus 1 all the way up to XM. Okay, now in this, what you've done is you've kind of repeated. Okay, so it's centrally weighted, center weighted because you're weighting the center. Okay, by, by, uh, by, uh, by a certain weight, right? Uh, WC. Now you can also show that when WC is equal to 1, when WC is equal to 1, you get, you get the median filter, okay, and uh, and when W C is greater than or equal to n, okay, you will get y to be equal to x c itself, okay, which means that it's like an identity filter, right? If you want, if you if you if you, if you simply want to say pick that intensity itself, okay, you could also do that, okay, by using a central by using a center weighted median filter. These are two extremes again, whereas you might want to choose W C somewhere in between. Okay, having said this, let's just kind of look at a few examples of, of how these are, uh, right, how this filter works, the median filter. Here is, here is an example of how a median filter output would look like. Now, this one is simply Lena. Okay, we just, we just synthetically, you know, created, uh, okay, yeah, so right, we synthetically added noise. Now, this is the original Lena image. 
and then when you add a Gaussian kind of noise and if you okay so you get this so for Gaussian noise of course you cannot use a median filter at all so you'd use a simple averaging filter and then as expected right there is some cleaning up of noise but there is loss of edges and so on if you had if you had uh, if you had he made with salt pepper noise right it's called salt pepper noise because because it almost looks like you've sprayed or sprinkled this image with uh, with uh, salt and pepper so you can see the salt pepper noise here and then if you clean it up right with a median filter what you get is this and okay, this definitely looks reasonably sharp right and uh, that is the advantage of of the this one median filter even though we have applied it all over the image right you have not applied the median filter selectively we have applied it all over the image because the noise is reasonably dense here now this is a case f for example this is an image that is affected by salt noise okay that means it has lots of saturated pixels think of it as some 40 as a display or whatever and now and now what you could do is you know you could actually uh, you could actually apply a, apply what is called a what's called a min filter right in order to be able to you know, you know handle this kind of unipolar noise okay or salt noise and therefore what you get right i mean uh, is, is this image which is a filtered output that again looks pretty good in fact right you should watch, should watch out for things right that actually emerge okay which are not so clear right uh, you know in the this one original image when it's uh, when it is affected by salt noise um, this is the one which is affected by actually you know this one uh, this one a pepper noise okay that means this kind of makes it may look more dark because it is affected by this kind of a pepper noise if you use a max filter right then of course many of these features emerge now and you're also able to right handle this kind of noise okay so it's very simple to implement okay this kind of uh, you know these kind of median filters of course they don't they don't have a fast implementation because convolution at all does not work these are non-linear okay but but still right these are these are still kind of say heavily used okay these kind of filters whenever whenever one wants to deal with right impulse kind of noise and uh, right and to kind of and to, to just conclude this topic on the topic of noise filtering right let me just let me just mention the fact that uh, fact that right, we have not talked about uh, let's say multiplicative or speckle noise speckle noise is typically dealt with using wavelets and so on and uh, photon noise also right we have been talked about photon noise is, uh, is a signal dependent noise and uh, and you know and again it's not something that is actually easy to handle and typically one of the standard ways ways to do it is kind of applying an Anscombe transform and making it into a kind of a Gaussian random variable and then going through an AWG and so on but that again is, is kind of right beyond the scope of this course right and therefore uh, therefore right we just have uh, we just have right one more uh, okay one more thing to actually finish before we wrap up wrap up this, this noise filtering and that is what is called transform domain filtering.